In today's video, we're going to be talking about premium and discount pricing. So I'm sure you've all heard the phrase buy low and sell high, right? It's a very common phrase you hear in the trading and investing um, industry. But what does that really mean? Nobody really takes the time to actually dive into what that is and how we can utilize it in our trading to better our results. So today, what we're going to do is go over some theory about premium and discount pricing, and then we're going to dive into some actual chart examples so you can see the theory in action. Now, before you, you can see there's a brief little diagram I've drawn, as well as a few tips I'd like to go over. So let's get started. So we all know that we should be buying low and selling high, right? A premium is when price is at its high. A discount is when price is at its low. It helps to think of it. Think of premium discount pricing in terms of um, let's use gas prices, for example. When gas prices are really high, you're paying a premium to fill your tank, right? Um, when gas prices are lower than usual, you're basically, you're buying gas at a discount. You're filling your tank at a discounted price. So the same theory applies to trading as well as uh, pretty much any other market in the world, right? So buying low and selling high increases our risk to reward and increases our win rate. That's the tip number one that I have before you here. So why is that? And how is that? Well, a few different things. It helps us avoid insignificant points of interest to be trading from. Okay, it encourages you to focus more on the extremes. And so what I mean by that is, let's say price is currently at this low right here. We're trading higher, trading higher. And let's say there's a point of interest right around here that, that piques your interest. But there's also a point of interest right here. And there's also a point of interest right here, okay? If you decide to sell from here in hopes that it's gonna go down, there's a few things wrong with that, okay? Let me show you briefly with the parameter tool. So if you were to sell from this point of interest, put your stop loss just above it, target the low, you have a very poor risk to reward ratio, right? About 2R, that's pretty bad. Now, if you were to target the second point of interest, the risk to reward ratio gets better, of course. You know, 4.22R, that's better. Um, a little bit safer, but it's just basically hugging that 50% line, right? Still not that great. Now, if we were to target the extreme, which is in our premium pricing, if we're looking to sell, this is the most favorable, favorable situation. Potential 8.6R. Instead, you can see the, the tremendous difference, right? So basically, this POI... And this POI, because it's not really in premium pricing, we should just be able to disregard it entirely. And that leaves us only one POI to focus on, one point of interest to focus on, which is the absolute extreme point of interest. And by targeting that, we avoid potentially two um, completely unnecessary losses, and we focus on the highest probability area, which takes us to our profit and leaves us with a very high risk reward ratio. So. As you can see, it increases our risk reward ratio and our overall win rate by uh, helping us avoid unnecessary losses by focusing on insignificant points of interest. So let me just clean this up a bit. There we go. So how do we, how do we gauge premium and discount pricing? Well, for me personally, I use the GANbox tool or the Fibonacci tool. You can find them both in the toolbar on the left-hand side, right up here where it says GAN and Fibonacci tools, Fib retracement, GAN box, very simple. I have them both favorited on my toolbar um, because I use them for different things, uh, but you can use either one. Now, when you're using the Fibonacci tool, just eliminate all the other numbers um, other than 50%. So if I just click on my settings here briefly, I have zero, 0 0.5, and one checked off. Same with the GAN box. Um, it also helps to color the 50% line. It just helps differentiate uh, the levels a bit more and puts the emphasis on uh, buying low and selling high, basically, because you see that 50% line very clearly. So once you have that figured out, all your settings figured out for those tools, number three that I have written here is measure the entire impulsive leg, the extreme high to extreme low, or the extreme low to the extreme high. So that's very simple, right? In this scenario, you can clearly see that I've done that. This would be our extreme high right here. So I started my GAN box tool right there and I simply drag the tool down to the extreme low, which would be this low right here. 
So this is the impulsive leg, right? Anything that happened before, of course, this is just a diagram, but let's just say this was a consolidation and it's insignificant. This right here was the impulsive move. So that's what we're going to be measuring for a premium and discount pricing, right? Because we don't want to enter during an impulsive move, of course, that's just trading basics. We don't enter during an impulsive move, we enter upon the retracement. But what people tend to struggle with is where to enter upon the retracement, right? And which order block to choose, which point of interest to choose, which supply and demand, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to call it. This concept here is what helps us choose the best points of interest and the best places to enter um, in terms of premium and discount pricing. So number four that I've written here is it's always best to gauge premium and discount pricing on the higher time frames. Now, just for example, I wrote 15 minutes or higher. So it could be 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, etc. cetera. Um, now you can gauge premium and discount pricing in a fractal manner by doing this process on a low time frame. Um, but that is a much more subjective task and it takes a great deal of experience to be able to accurately do that without uh, misleading yourself in your own trading, basically. So what I mean by that is, let's say we're on the one hour time frame and I measure the premium versus discount here. Well then as price is make, making its way up or as it starts to go in our favor, we could go to the five minute or the three minute or the one minute and um, look for a new bearish impulsive move and then gauge the premium versus discount on that and enter in a very refined manner once price reaches back up to premium. So it could be something like, like this, goes back up to premium of this move, right? And then sell from there. So that's a very fractal way to do it. Um, like I said, it requires a little more experience and understanding and practice to be able to do that accurately. Um, what I would recommend is stick to the 15 minute or higher to gauge premium and discount pricing. Always look at the bigger picture of things. Um, it is not wise to just trade from lower time frames. You have to have a higher time frame narrative in place. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a clean and clear understanding of premium and discount pricing. Now that we've gone through the theory of this, I would like to dive into some chart examples so I can show you this theory in action. All right, so we're taking a look at USDJPY on the one hour time frame. So as we can see, we are clearly in a bearish market here. We have clear bearish order flow. We're making consistent lower lows and lower highs. So we should really only be looking for sells in this scenario. So in recent price action, we can see that we've had a clear break of market structure. This low was very clearly violated. So let's label that break of structure to the downside. So this is where many people struggle with locating the best point of interest to target for an entry, because we do have a few. We have this, this candle right here. We have this candle right here. And we have this candle right here. Okay, so we have three points of interest. So how do we choose which one is best? Well, we can use the theory that we just went over about premium versus discount pricing to help gauge which opportunity would be best to focus on here. So let's simply take the GAN box tool and we're gonna drag it from the extreme high. So that would be this candlestick wick right here. We're gonna drag it down all the way to the extreme low, which would be this wick of this candle right here. So we can see very clearly right off the bat, this point of interest should not be considered whatsoever because it is directly below um, our 50% line. So let's disregard this, okay? So a lot of people might be confused by that because we had another break of structure right here. That was a solidified low and price pushed right through it. But keep in mind, we're focusing on the bigger picture here. We're focusing on the macro rather than the micro. And the macro is the fact that this is one entire bearish leg and we don't want to be getting in under the 50% line of this tool, right? Because that would mean that we're selling in discount pricing and that wouldn't be selling high and, and buying low. Um, so we should just disregard this point of interest altogether. It's a very weak area to be trading from. So that leaves us with two options here. 
Now, this is where it might get confusing because these are both in premium pricing. So technically these would both be valid. And in fact, they both created um, imbalance. So these are certainly both valid points of interest. So what I would do in this scenario, because there is no 100% guaranteed rule of which one is gonna be um, triggered or which one is gonna hold, I get asked that all the time and there simply is no answer to that. These both caused technically a break of structure, right? This is the absolute extreme that caused this entire move, but this one is the true last point of low momentum supply that did cause the move. So my focus would be on this. However, if I were to, um, hold on, let me delete this for one second, drag these out. If I were to set a sell limit order here, target the lows, looks good, 6.75R. Let's say this gets stopped out, right? We just push right past it and get stopped out, then what I would simply do is accept that loss and enter again from here because I know that they're both valid points of interest. And in fact, this would represent even a larger risk reward ratio. So I would certainly recover that loss and much more if that were to happen, right? Uh, sure, they could both be taken out if we're seeing a reversal, but in this case, we're trading with order flow, right? So we want to be focusing on one or both of these zones. So like I said, I would target this one first. If we were to get stopped out, I would simply set another limit order here and trade from there instead, okay? So like we've gone over, we've already established that we are in premium pricing. We're well above the 50% of this bearish leg. So either of these positions are valid. So what I'm gonna do now is actually target the first point of interest here but I'm going to use the GANBOX tool again because I like to enter at the 50% um, of the point of interest for even better risk to reward ratio. So let's set a sell limit order at that 50% of the point of interest. We'll pull this back for now just to get it out of the way. Uh, let's see, let's go for a six pip stop loss just to be safe, keep lots of room above it. Not too much, but enough. And we're simply going to target the low, right? Let's go to 60 pips and six pips. So it's an even 10 R opportunity, which is absolutely wonderful. That's an FTMO challenge right there. That's a monthly target taken care of. You can take the rest of the month off at that point. So wonderful potential on this trade. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, interesting. So we did see a reaction from this initial point of interest, but you can see how weak it was, right? We had a minor pullback uh, from that reaction point and then price pushed right through it. So of course, if you were to target this first candle here, this first point of interest that was below the 50% mark on our GANBOX tool um, in discount pricing rather than premium pricing, you would, have taken, um, you would have taken a loss for sure. So let's see if we get tapped into this trade. Okay, we do. Let's just adjust the entry parameters, clean this up a bit. Okay, so we're now tapped into the trade. We saw a little bit of drawdown, not much. What would that be? Yeah, about three pips of drawdown, no big deal. We have a six pip stop loss. Um, that's plenty to cover spread as well, so should be safe there. Okay, as we can see, we're in significant profit already. Okay, so there you have it, 10 R secured. So what we did here is we kept both of these points of interest in mind because they were both valid. They both created imbalance as well, um, right? These were both valid opportunities, but we targeted the first one first because that was the most likely to get hit. Um, and it was the last point of supply prior to this break of structure, right? So what we successfully accomplished here, other than a successful 10 R trading opportunity, we successfully avoided this loss, okay? A lot of people might have looked at that as a point of interest and a potential trading opportunity to go short. However, if we're keeping in mind premium versus discount pricing, 
that opportunity should have been completely disregarded and we would have avoided a loss. Okay, so that's, that's a really good example of how we can utilize premium versus discount pricing in our everyday trading opportunities. Uh, let's go over one more. So now we're taking a look at AUD USD, Australian dollar versus US dollar. Now we're currently on the 15 minute time frame, and there's some recent price action here that I'd like to go over as well to demonstrate the premium versus discount pricing concept. So what do we have here? Our bullish leg as of now would be from this extreme low to this extreme high. So it's very clear right off the bat that anything above the 50% line would be considered premium pricing and anything below would be considered discount pricing. Now, as you can see, we're in clear bullish order flow, so we should definitely not be looking for selling opportunities. We should only be looking for buying opportunities. So let me delete this for one second. I'll put it back later. So in this recent price action, this bullish leg here, we do have a clear break of structure right here. Market structure was broken to the upside with clear bullish momentum, but we actually have two. So let me map that on as well. Right, so we have two, which means there's multiple points of interest, right? We have a point of interest right here. Mm, let's see, I don't wanna target these technically that could be a point of interest as well. However, I don't like the price action that was surrounding it because it's very efficient. Okay, so as you can see, these wicks even overlap a little bit. It's very efficient pricing. There was no imbalance created. Um, technically, this could be a good point of interest because it did cause imbalance, but it is a bullish candle. Um, so I'm not gonna target that. This, I like this because it is uh, a clear bullish engulfing pattern. There is a little bit of imbalance created here and it's the absolute extreme. So just if you're ever curious about which point of interest to, to target as well, just a little tip, always go for the extreme. If you're doubting yourself, just always go for the extreme. If you miss the trade, that's fine, right? So if I were to target here, for example, and um, this point of interest ended up uh, being the cause for a new higher high being created in this market. Um, and let's say I was targeting down here for a trade, then, you know, it is what it is. At least I know that I was being safe and protecting my capital and not trying to rush into a trade because of FOMO. Okay. So in this case, I don't like this point of interest. So I'm going to delete that. So yeah, this area here, I'm going to disregard that. So we have this point of interest here. Um, which caused the break of structure. That's our extreme level of demand that caused this break of structure. But then we have a consolidation here and another break of structure. Now, what caused that break of structure, um, in a general perspective, it would be this bearish candle here, but we can refine it a bit more by targeting this indecisional uh, small candle here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have two points of interest. Also would like to mention this candle did create imbalance here and this candle did create imbalance here. So we have two highly probable um, points of interest, but are they both really highly probable? Let's dive into that. So let, let me put the GAN box tool back on this chart. Once again, we can clearly see um, one point of interest is within premium pricing and one point of interest is within the discount pricing. So if we're looking for buying positions, we should completely disregard this uh, higher up point of interest. So let's delete that, okay? Another thing to keep in mind is that there is actually resting liquidity below this level. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a topic for another video. I don't wanna get too into that but it is another confluence to add um, to the fact that this is probably not a good point of interest. So we have two reasons to disregard that and multiple reasons to add confluence to this point of interest here. So this is, I, I just wanna clarify this. This is a point in time where, where people get really confused when trading because we do have clear two clear breaks of structure and two points of interest. Um, I'll delete this for now just to keep things clean here, but Whenever there's two breaks of structure, people get confused because 
Well, isn't the point of this strategy to target the point of origin for a break of structure and trade from that? Well, yes, but as you all may know by now, not all of them work out. So what we can do to inc increase our win rate and uh, risk reward ratio is simply target the absolute extremes, which would be this point of interest here. And of course, utilize premium versus discount pricing, which would be using this tool, dragging it from the extreme low to the extreme high in this scenario. And that helps us validate that this is the area we should be focusing on and anything above it should be disregarded. This is our extreme. This is the highest probable point of um, having a successful trade, basically. And even if it's not successful, we know that we did our best to frame it in a successful way. So let me go ahead and delete this. Um, let me just measure this. I want to see how many pips that is. Okay, so the point of interest altogether is quite small. So I'm not going to target the 50% of this. I'm just going to target the, um, the high of the zone and put my stop loss just below. Let's say, let's say five pips. So let's take out the long position parameter tool. Drag our stop loss so it is five pips exactly. So what that does is it accounts for spread and it also clears this low of this bullish candle right here. And of course it clears the, uh, the whole point of interest, right? So that's a very safe stop loss. In terms of target, we're simply gonna target the high here, okay? So what kind of risk reward ratio does that give us? That gives us 5.68 risk to reward ratio. Very healthy. Um, typically my minimum is 5R, so this is, this is well above that. Okay, so let's play price forward and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, price barreled through this, uh, this first point of interest. Obviously that would have been an immediate loss. It didn't even struggle, it just pushed right through it. And that is because some of the reasons that we went through. Yes, there's resting liquidity here, but that's not the point of this video. Um, the main point is this was in premium pricing. So we would wanna be selling from premium pricing, not buying, okay? So as you can see, we have tapped into the order that we've set here. Let's continue price forward and see if this one pans out in our favor. Okay, so a little bit of drawdown there, not a big deal. We certainly could have targeted the 50% for a safer trade and a better risk reward ratio. But as you all know, if you target the 50%, you have um, higher chances of the trade not being hit at all. And you just, you're just left uh, watching price go in your favor without being in the trade. So that's why I measured this area to begin with because it was small enough that I was perfectly comfortable targeting the high rather than targeting the 50%. And we had, yeah, about three pips of drawdown, but we had a five pip stop loss, so that's not a big deal. We'd definitely still be in the trade. Okay, we came back to our entry point. Of course, on lower time frames, there would be a new uh, entry opportunity here. Okay, broke minor structure. Significant profit so far. Oh, almost hit the take profit. What's gonna happen here? Stay confident in the analysis, hold that position. And what do we see? Ooh, almost hit the take profit again. Are we gonna get there? Yes, we are. Okay, so another clear example of premium and discount pricing, how it can help us choose the best points of interest. Um, we, we saw a successful trading opportunity for 10R and now another one for 5.68R. Um, so as you can see, there's multiple ways we can look at this to identify where we should be trading from. And this very simple trick can help you avoid multiple insignificant, um, unnecessary losses, avoid those, those points of interest that, that don't mean anything. Um, and this will result in better risk reward ratio, a higher win rate and overall trading success. Okay. So just take a minute before you enter a trade and make sure you're entering in premium pricing if you're selling and discount pricing if you're buying okay and like i said just stay 15 minutes and above uh, for your time frame for gauging premium versus discount pricing that certainly will help um, as you get more experienced and comfortable with this theory um, then you can practice it on the lower time frames as well in a fractal manner so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll talk to you all soon